Bonne locale, my garden of roses. Again, I apologize for the scratchiness of my voice. I'm still not at my best, but I'm... I can't go that long without producing a video or working or anything. So, here I am. Uh, those in charge, those who have taken the lead in the Me Too movement, are rapidly losing their control over it. As many high-profile figures say that the movement has gotten out of hand, and as many high-profile figures within the movement are having sexual assault and sexual harassment allegations levied against them. I, I think at this point, we might want to see people start using a different hashtag, grab them by the penis, because this seems to be a very frequent occurrence of those who support the Me Too movement from a legislative level. Of course, I'm talking about California Assemblywoman Christina Garcia, who back in 2014 was uh, accused by and uh, accused by a, a staffer named uh, Daniel Friero, who worked for a different California Assemblyman, uh, of being groped by Garcia, having his dick grabbed and his. Uh, back rubbed by the then drunk Garcia after a, uh, a an assembly ba uh, baseball game while he was cleaning up the dugouts. Uh, and this, of course, is not the only claim against him. There was also another case in which she grabbed someone by the penis in May of 2017 when a Sacramento lobbyist made this accusation against her. Unfortunately, this individual spoke on the uh, for reason of anonymity because being a California lobbyist and speaking against Me Too right now would be the end of a career. Of course, this is part of the larger problem of the Me Too movement. It has become a political weapon, a cudgel, and to speak against it can be career killing. Unfortunately, we're going to be seeing more and more stories like this come out, and I'm very proud of the men who will speak up against these women who have exercised their power and expect that no one will believe their accusers, especially in light of the fact that most of this story is based around the idea that men are the only ones who can be rapists and assaulters and abusers, and women are innocent and without agency. When in fact, it doesn't matter your gender, it doesn't matter your sex, it doesn't matter who you are, if you use your political position to intimidate someone and sexually harass and assault them, you are just as disgusting as the next one. And doubly so, if you go out and cry out, me too, while genuinely having a history of being the kind of person Me Too is meant to stand against. This is a growing problem. And we've had actors in France, we've had uh, newspaper uh, opinion articles, many people talking about how the Me Too movement has grown out of hand, and I completely agree. While on the one hand, I'm certainly glad that people feel confident to come out and speak, there has never been, and honestly, you know, there has never been in the last 30 years any stigma for speaking up against sexual harassment. In fact, much to the contrary, ever since the sexual harassment lawsuit craze in the late 80s and early 90s, women have held a weapon of power against men above them even. Uh, whether in companies or politically, by merely making an accusation and knowing that their tears will have them believed. And yet we have this narrative produced by the Me Too movement that these women are terrified to come forward because no one's going to believe them and no one's going to care, when the reality of the matter is we want people who make such accusations to go to the police and have the situation investigated appropriately. Now, that being said, I am, I, I do wish that, uh, what was his name, Daniel Fierro, had gone to the police. However, I also understand why he didn't. That being said, 
there are other people who witnessed this event and were able to corroborate it for Politico and other news outlets, giving us evidence that this situation has occurred. And with so many other stories, most of which coming out anonymously because of fear of losing their jobs, losing their careers, I am inclined to believe them, but at the same time, I have to be healthful, uh, mindfully skeptical and realize that if we don't have proper investigations into these things, regardless of the risk it can pose, we are only going to have just that, accusations being thrown around. I'm very glad for Fierro and the anonymous uh, people who came forward to Politico and other newspapers to speak on this subject had the courage to do so because it's extremely horrific that, th that these people can condemn Donald Trump entirely on the subject of grab him by the pussy when they will go out of their way to grab a man by the penis and think they'll get away with it just because they're a woman. What we're seeing here is, in a way, just desserts because there's a lot of hypocrisy going on. There's a lot of people who are completely guilty of sexual assault, sexual harassment, who are, who are women, who have come out in strong vocal support and even had their photos taken for the cover of Time magazine. Uh, as silence breakers, when honestly across the last five years alone, there has been no silence on the subject of sexual assault and harassment. I mean, if you just look at college campuses, it seems like there's a good four or five false accusation cases every year, which are now being uh, taken back to court for the fact that these lies have destroyed young men's lives. And now for the fear of young men's lives being destroyed, you know, careers being destroyed. I believe that we're going to need to see cases brought against some of these uh, hypocritical Me Too supporters who work in legislation, whether it be state legislation or as more stories come out, I suspect we're going to see federal legislative bodies have to address this issue. It, it just breaks my heart, honestly, because while so many of so much of the narrative is painted around women being afraid to come forward, it's genuinely the men who are afraid to come forward because no one will believe them. People will want to high five them and say, you know, give the South Park response. Nice, nice. When the fact of the matter is, they are just as much victims as any woman who is a victim of sexual assault is a victim. But we shouldn't be focusing on victimhood. We should be focusing on helping these people and making sure that they don't lose their lives for speaking against a woman, for speaking against someone who is committing assault, harassment, crimes. This is a major problem and it's only going to get worse as the year goes on because these people have made careers for themselves, have started climbing the ranks and setting up uh, further election campaigns based on their position within the Me Too movement. And they don't deserve to serve our states or country if they are going to be such hypocritical, corrupt individuals. Thank you for listening, and I will catch you next time. Bonsoir. Mm -hmm.